In this new watch tutorial, we're going to cover trim mode for the automation system. So in other tutorials, we've described the different ways of writing automation with uh, touch, auto latch, and crossover. But once you've written automation, uh, the trim mode allows you to add or subtract values to the already existing automation. So let me show you how it works. So here I've got uh, this one track without any automation written as of yet. Um, so let's try something here. I'm going to write some, some automation, some volume automation, just a little bit. Something like that, a couple of rides and a big move. Then a big move. Okay, like that. Now, uh, if I put the automation system into trim, watch what happens here. So trim mode is right here. I enter trim. This fader now moves to the center of, of its throw. And on the screen, we get this new automation line, a secondary line. This is going to be the trim line. And if I touch the fader here, it says zero dB. And what that means is there's no deviation from what's already been written. So if I play the project, the volume is going to continue to change with the automation curve as it exists. It's going to go up here. Then we're going to jump down and come back up again. But the fader is not moving at all. Now, I'm going to write some trim automation, and uh, you can get the idea of how this works. So right now, I'm going to trim everything up. Notice how we see a secondary line. That's the result of the trim automation plus the original automation. Now I'm going to let it come back to normal because I'm, in, I'm in still in touch mode. So even in touch, when we're in trim mode, the different automation write modes affect it, but they're affecting the trim line, not the original automation line. So now this is starting to look a little complicated on the screen. I've got this trim line here, which I can edit if I want to. And then I've got the lighter colored line here, which is the original automation line. Then I've got this. This is the new result of the original automation line plus the trim value that's what this upper line is. So now if I go back and continue to write some other trim values, I can pull it back down again. Now I can trim negative numbers. And as we can see on the display, I'm trimming negative 8 dB from the original automation line. You get the idea how this works. Now, <clears throat> currently, this trim line can be edited. In other words, I can watch the fader move the trim value, and I can change it if I want. I can add more here, come back, whatever. But at some point in time, we're going to coalesce the trim values into the original automation data. In other words, we're going to, we're going to do the calculation, add the trim to the original value, and create a new automation line. That's called freezing the trim. And there are options for how this occurs. If we go into the settings here, freeze trim has its own set of options down here. Right now, it's the, the trim will be frozen when we leave trim mode. So let me show you what that looks like. So if I exit trim mode by pressing this button again, all these values are going to be summed together. And what we're going to be left with is this new line, the, the sum line. So here we go. That's our new automation line. Now, I can't edit the trim anymore. That's done. The trim has is, is now been folded into the original automation data, and a new automation line has been created. So uh, once again, uh, oh, sorry. I'm going to enter trim. And now I'm going to retrim this. I'm gonna just going to push it up a little bit. Then I'm going to fill that trim to the end. OK. Now, if I leave trim, we're going to see that get coalesced back together again. And we have a new automation line. So you can go on with this endlessly. And trim can be used in conjunction with the fill modes, just like a normal automation uh, writing pass. So for example, 
Um, and this is something I use a lot. I'll set the locators around an area that I'm going to be trimming. And I will put fill to loop on and I'll, I'll actually lock it in. So it's going to stay on no matter what. And what happens is when I'm in touch trim, now I can sit here and just sort of adjust up a little bit and that'll trim the entire section up a little bit. Or no, maybe that was too much. Now it's going to trim the entire section down a little bit. So it's very handy for taking the automation paths that you did in a certain section and just raising it or lowering it. The other good thing is this trim filled to loop works while you're in stop. So if I just take the fader and push it up like this, I've trimmed the whole line up without even having to press play. So uh, a common application for this would be in music mixing when you've completed a mix and now you want to print a version of the mix with the lead vocal up 1 dB. So what I could do here is find the 1 dB mark on the fader right there and set the left and right locators to the beginning and the end of the song, trim the entire lead vocal up 1 dB and print the mix. Um, that version of the mix. And that will be the lead vocal up version. And then conversely, I could do a lead vocal down by going to negative 1 dB here. And it fills to the loop, and the loop would be set to the entire song. And now I have a lead vocal down version. And that's very quick and simple to do. So uh, that's trim mode uh, for the automation. And we'll be back with more automation tutorials.